We spoke in January, the JP Morgan Healthcare Conference, and we thought that we might get the approval and it was expected, though still it is a milestone. Are you happy with sort of the milestones that you have achieved so far this year? Well, first, thank you for having me again and nice to see you again. Um, we're actually really excited about producing what we think, what is the first drug ever approved specifically for the treatment of postpartum depression. And for us, the, the excitement really is that this is the leading medical complication of pregnancy. And if you look at the leading cause of death in pregnancy, is suicide. So the opportunity to treat women with this really terrible disease is just, it's very exciting for us. Talk to me about drug pricing. Our analysis had it coming out around $20,000 to $35,000. Our analysts had said that was a little bit higher than what they had expected. What are your thoughts on the drug pricing? Well, we thought a lot about pricing. And obviously, when you really think about pricing, you're thinking about access. And so we spent a lot of time proactively with payers. And we described what, the, what this product could offer. And if you think about the profile, first, rapid acting, one course of treatment, resolution of symptoms literally within hours and completion within you know, two and a half days, plus the fact that postpartum depression is a multi-generational disorder. It just doesn't affect the mother. It affects the family, workplace, everything. And we've gotten extremely positive responses through that range that you mentioned. And even at, the, at our price of 34000 very, very positive responses. How is that translating into sales? Our analysis on the Bloomberg had showed about $28 million expected for 2019, looking at a peak perhaps of about $700 million. How were you able to forecast sales going out? Well, we haven't forecasted precisely, but there's a range and you're in that range. This year, remember this year the drug won't be launched probably until June unless DEA acts sooner. We're launch ready today. So this, this year's numbers are a little bit dependent obviously on when we can launch. You have a very busy year. <laughs> it's a, we're heading into the end of the first quarter and we are expecting some other announcements from you. Uh, what kind of year is this going to be for you? Well, Zoresso is just the beginning for Sage. And, and one of the things we, we, we say about Zoresso, besides the fact that we're so excited about what it offers for women with PBD, it represents the way we're thinking about our business. New molecules that really make a difference for patients. So the, 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 I, I, for want of a better word, I know there's a lot of excitement about our oral molecule, which is Sage 217. Mm -hmm. That has already completed two phase three studies studies for major depression and postpartum and we have the fourth one target the, the third one targeted either by the end of this year or the beginning of next year but behind that we have other drugs 324 718 and those will be reporting out data this year as well so we're going to have a very very busy year this year so much in the biotech world is that pressure between investing in R&D and investing in the drugs and then turning out a profit. And no one expects you to be profitable this year, of course, because you are investing so heavily in some of these new drugs. The good news is you have cash on hand. <laughs> we have a chart showing, I think you said about now a billion or a little bit over a billion dollars. You've just completed a new fundraising round. Are you happy with the cash on your balance sheet now through second half of 2020? Well, you know, every CEO, of course, wants more money, so let's be clear. <laughs> but we have about a billion and a half dollars, so we're very well situated. And, and when we think about, you know, our, our, our cash on hand, what I really think about is, and in terms of profitability, is really our long-term value creation curve. And I think I, the people at Sage have done a great job creating investor value from the start when we went public, you know, really only three and a half, four years ago. So we've done a great job with that, and I think we can continue to do that with our milestones.